Hey, what is going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So, the most requested tutorial on my channel right now is how I created my new intro that I've been using for the past couple of weeks. And I'll just go ahead and roll it again real fast, even though I know you guys saw it at the beginning of this video. Uh, but I wanted to do a tutorial on this video, but I didn't really want to give out like step by step because this is my new intro and I don't want everyone, you know, uh, using this exact intro. But I wanted to share the tips on this and show you guys how I did it. So, uh, right off the bat, uh, I want to say I've used, I'm using three plugins to do this. So I got uh, this little uh, polygon sort of thing in the background here is trap code mirror. Uh, I have element 3D for the 3D text here. And then this one's a little bit optional for this tutorial, but I also am using um, optical flares to follow along with the circle path here. And typically, you know, I'm not a big fan of doing tutorials on plugins, especially when there's more than one plugin in the video. And that's really just because like you don't need to use plugins to make great content. You know, it, as I see it is if I have to use a plugin uh, to do a graphic or an effect, it's really because, you know, I'm not being creative enough and I just need to use, you know, I need something quick to give me something cool. So, so I primarily use plugins just to kind of get a boost of creativity because I am not being creative. So it's kind of what happened with this uh, intro. But for the most part, you know, I am going to break this down and you will be able to create this if you have these plugins. But also, if, even if you can't, you know, there's going to be some great tips in this, you know, how I created like this uh, sort of animation with the 3D text. You know, I wanted that to be 2D because I'm not a big 3D guy, um, but I couldn't, you know, there was really no intuitive way to do this in After Effects, like do, uh, you know, 2D animation like this unless I animated each letter individually. So I went to Element 3D and kind of just quickly did this effect with the text. So I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, and then, of course, you know, we have some simple text animation down here. And I want to I want to show you guys the trap code mirror plugin. And um, I have some bokeh for my last intro. So I'll go ahead and show you guys how we kind of go ahead and create this. And the one thing you want to think about when you're creating intro, especially for YouTube, is you kind of want to put like, you know, your channel URL in the intro because, uh, or at least somewhere in the beginning of your video, just because uh, people will embed your video on their websites and stuff like that. And you'll be getting external views. And you want uh, those viewers uh, that are watching your video on someone else's website to know that, know where the content has came from. So, you know, so they can just come to your channel and subscribe there if they really want to. And secondly, a lot of people like to put their actual logo at the beginning of their video. Uh, I'm not a big fan of doing that just because I kind of have like a weird name. So I went ahead and just put my text uh, kind of right in your face so everyone knows how to spell Sunduck Film so they can type me up on Google or YouTube. And I just went ahead and put the logo in the corner, you know, kind of just as this little subtle thing. You know, I'm not really big on putting logos on YouTube videos just because uh, as if your annotations are not disabled, you'll see like my logo right now in the corner of the video. It should be like right around here. Um, and also you see my logo on my uh, page of my channel. So... Anyway, that's enough of ranting on this, but I just want to go ahead and just talk. I wanted to talk about some of the concepts that went behind creating this. So let's go ahead and let's jump over the After Effects here and let's go into a new tut and let's talk about how I did this stuff. So, so I have a blurred background here. Like it's probably like a gradient. I download this off a of site. I can't give this out for free just because, you know, this is paid for. You know, I have an entire gradient pack like this. But what you can do is you can take like a photo or something and just com like completely Gaussian blur it and you'll probably get something very similar to this. So my desktop background is this photo right here, which I just threw on a Gaussian blur on it and really blurred it all the way up and added just a few color filters to it. And this is just an example of how you can create these gradient backgrounds with a little interesting uh, you know, color spots here and there. But with that said, let's go ahead and maybe move on to another element. So another element that I have here is this uh, picture of a bokeh element. And, you know, I just wanted to incorporate that for my last intro. And you can just, you know, find these on Google. You can type in Boca, uh, you know, images or whatever. And you can kind of find these sort of things. And once again, I can't give this out just because I did purchase this from a pack. But you don't have to do that. You can find these on Google if you search up, you know, Boca. So what I did with this one is I went ahead and I set the mode to screen to kind of get rid of that black background. As you can see, it kind of blends in here very nicely. But what I did is what I hit P on my keyboard to bring up position. And I all clicked it and I typed in a wiggle expression. And I basically did like uh, one uh, comma 100. And that kind of just created that sort of nice little animation there. And the one thing I keep in mind is sometimes, you know, when you wiggle a position for like uh, a photo or something, it will kind of like could be cut off at the top. So make sure to scale that proportionally so it doesn't quite go off uh, frame so you don't see those edges. All right, and now let's talk about uh, trap code mirror. 
And this was actually the first time I ever used it. And, you know, I just had it. So I was like, you know what? I'll just use it. It's just sitting here not doing anything. So let's just use it. So you got to create a new solid and we'll call this one mirror. And let's go up to effect, track code, mirror. All right. So I'm not a professional at this effect. You know, I don't have that much experience with it, but I you know, went ahead and messed around with it. And this is kind of how I created that geometry sort of uh, background animation. So I went into the geometry here and I set the vertices X to... Uh, 225 and I went to the vertices Y and I set it to 130 and I went into the size and I really increased this all the way across and up a little bit to kind of just fill this up. I think my exact settings were like um, 4,250 by uh, 3,140 and I'm just looking at my settings here because like I said I'm not a professional at this effect but I want to show you guys how I did that. And then I changed the X and Y step to 2 and now we're starting to get that sort of broken polygon look there. And then we'll go to reduce geometry and set this to 4x. And that will kind of just like reduce the amount of, uh, I guess, polygons in our frame here. And then I went ahead and went into the, like the fractal. And under amplitude, I went ahead and increased that to like 143. And like I said, I'm just looking at these. I'm not like amazing or something at this. So I went to the evolution here and I made, you know, I went ahead and just keyframed this. So, you know, I'll go to the beginning of our timeline here and add a keyframe and go to like the end of our a timeline, maybe seven seconds or something. And I just went ahead and just animated that a little bit. So these would be kind of moving and slightly animating. And that'd be pretty cool. And then I went to like the scroll here, the X and Y. I set the scroll to 78 and the scroll Y to 104. And now I have like the basic rundown of this. And then I went back up to the geometry at the top here and I started playing with the positions of this. So you know, first thing I did was I went to the rotate X and I went ahead and set this all the way down to like 90 degrees. So now we kind of have like this sort of plane and I think I actually set it to 95 just so we can kind of see the top of our polygons here. And, um, you know, I went ahead to the position C, the Z position and kind of brought it a little bit closer to us, so like negative 500 ish. And, you know, went ahead and just lowered this with the position X, Y. And so now we kind of have you know, our evolution here. And to finish this effect off, what I did is I went to effect blur and I put it through on a Gaussian blur. And I just went ahead and increased that to like 30 or something just so I can kind of see this stuff out of focus just because it looks cool in the background. I really liked it. And one thing I was thinking about doing, and you guys let me know in the comment section below if this would have been a smart move or not, but I also was playing with trap code, uh, I think that's Teo. And basically it's just like this uh, geometry mesh sort of thing. And I think it would have been overkill, but yeah, I was playing with that. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on that once I learn a little bit more about it. But um, yeah, I just threw that in there. Didn't like it. You know, that's, that's my, my point is, is that you should definitely experiment with a lot of things and kind of see how it looks. I mean, I wasn't even, I didn't have like this polygon sort of background. You know, I didn't plan that. I just was playing around with trap coats from the effects. And like I said, you know, it's just because, you know, I'm a little bit lazy and you didn't really have so much creativity. I was just messing around with the plugins. And usually plugins can help you produce some nice stuff. And for the most part, I like this clean look. But enough of rambling. Let's continue on. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy my text over. So I went in here and just typed in my text, Sunduck Film. I'm using the font uh, Gotham. And this one's bold. And the film part is, I think it's light. No, it's book. So there's my font. And then I went ahead and created a new solid and we'll call this one uh, element and we'll call this one Sunduck. And that's good. And then we'll go up to effect, add the video copilot and we'll add element. And I'll just go ahead briefly through this. So, you know, it's not a big deal. I'll go into custom layers, go into the text and we'll go ahead and add our um, <clears throat> text layer Sunduck. And I'll turn off Sunduck here and also our film text. And for the most part, we're looking pretty good. Let's go into the scene setup. And this is where it's all going to come alive. I'm going to go ahead and click the extrude here. And I, if you guys don't use Element 3D, you probably already know how to do this. So, you know, you might want to skip ahead in the video or something. But uh, the first thing I did was go into the bevel scale. And I tried to make this as thin as I could, you know, almost like 2D. Because like I said, I'm not a big fan of 3D. I'm just using Element 3D for its um, animation properties. But, you know, a little bit of 3D isn't that bad. I guess that's pretty thin for me. So I went in here to the materials and I have some nice materials here and I really just threw on like a black sort of look. I think it was a black loss. I don't remember. So now we got to go ahead and kind of just put this in a position that we really want it to be at. So we'll go to the world transform, we'll go to the world scale and maybe we'll scale this up a little bit. Maybe you should use the world Z position. I don't know, but really up to you and maybe like 1.15 is fine. And then how I really created that broken up animation, that random animation is really awesome. I went to group one. So you go to particle look multi 
object and you enable the multi object right here. So what we'll do is we'll go to like, you know, maybe one second here or something and we'll go ahead and add a keyframe for rotation and that's for the X, Y, and Z there. And we'll enable keyframes for the scatter X, Y, and Z. And what we'll do is maybe just hit U on our keyboard, bring up the keyframes. We'll select all these keyframes and we'll move these to like, you know, the end of our animation. So let's say the end of our animation is three seconds. So how I do this is I went ahead and just increased the scatter X, Y, and Z. Really have to increase these. So like the X scatter is probably at around eight. The Y scatter is a little bit larger and the Z scatter is definitely going in there really far because I want to create some big separation between the text. And we're here to rotation and really like pump that forward. So now if we move here, let me just solo this real fast and turn this off. If we move here, as you can see, the text will kind of just fall into place. I'm sorry about that, it's pixelated, but you know, I am recording a video here. But as you can see, we quickly are able to create this random animation that's gonna come right at us. And then to finish this effect off, what I did is I went back to our uh, world transform properties and I went to world position Z. I added a keyframe and let's hit you on a keyboard to bring that keyframe up. And I went ahead and moved that one to the end there to the end of our animation. And then I went to the now I went ahead and increased the Z animation into the negative values. So until it goes right off frame, which is about right there. And there we have our animation coming in. And then what I did is I went ahead and selected all the keyframes here and I hit F9 on my keyboard to make them easy as. So they'll kind of just like shoot right in here and then kind of slow down as they as it all comes together at the end of our animation. All right, and I went ahead and just added my film back in there and just offsetted it. And the last thing that I did is I went ahead and when I added a camera layer and all I did with it is go to the beginning of our timeline here, hit P on our keyboard for position, added a keyframe, and I went to like, you know, the end of our animation, which is, I think it was five seconds, but I'll just go to six seconds here. And I just basically uh, tracked the camera in a little bit. So we kind of have the camera zoom in just by a little bit. So we can kind of like feel like we're coming closer to the text and, you know, added that animation to it. And for the subscribe text and you know I just wanted that 2D and I was kind of lazy so all I did is I went to the animation presets went to the text went to the blurs and I believe I use evaporate yeah and evaporate is what I used and what I did is I just like brought the keyframes in a little bit closer and I time reverse keyframe these so now these will kind of just blur on and look pretty cool you know the last thing I did was I had my uh, logo animate on with a uh, optical flare, but I'm not going to show how to do that because I already have a tutorial on animating optical flares along a path. And you can watch this video right here if you're really interested on how to animate optical flares or really anything along a path. But um, that's basically how I created my intro. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It, it was probably a little bit rushed, but there's I think there's a lot of great content in this tutorial. So if you don't have all these plugins, hopefully you know you're able to take away one thing from a certain plugin. And at least see how what you know, see what type of creativity and what you know what goes in behind creating a YouTube intro. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please drop a like because it helps me out tremendously. And if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button for more After Effects tutorials. And please be sure to hit me up with my social media networks, those links in the description of this video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a good day.